please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page so you can be alerted of our new devotions and short sermons. For this evening's devotion, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version. Even as in his love he chose us, he picked us out for himself in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world so that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him and blameless in his sight, above reproach, and before him in love. He foreordained us, destined us, planned everything in love for us to be adopted as his own children to Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because this pleased him and this was his kind intent towards us. My dear brother and sister in Jesus Christ, God has not abandoned us in this wicked world filled with darkness and filled with the children of Satan and filled with demonic forces. He has not left us. He has not abandoned us. In fact, he warned us in the scripture that in the last days, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. When we examine the scriptures in Genesis chapter 6, people were marrying, people were drinking, people were ridiculing others, people were in rebellion to God, people were laughing at the prophets of God, people were ridiculing the message of the prophet Noah. We are living in such times, my brother and sister, where our faith is being tested, where God is dividing the people of faith with the people who do not believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible tells us that in the last days, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and 4, difficult times will come, perilous times, where your faith will be tested. But tonight we should cheer up because God reminds us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 and 6 that he preordained us to be chosen to be chosen to be this holy nation before God, this holy group of people that believed in God, believed in the message of God, believed in the prophets of God, and surrendered their life to the plans and purposes of God. As we read these scriptures tonight, I feel the power of God's sanctification prevalent in these times. Those who believe God is sanctifying them through the word. God is preparing them because you see, he chose us before the foundation of this world in love, in good intention towards us. He wanted us to prosper. He chose us to be his very own. Many of us believe that God chose us, that we are God's children, but they fail to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to transform them inside into the nature of God. The Bible is clear over here in verse 4. He chose us so that he could consecrate us, to sanctify us and to make us holy. 
And how does he make us holy? He gives us the choice to put to death the evil and selfish desires in us. And he gives us a choice every day to surrender our heart and mind to the word of God and to the spirit of God. When we reject the word of God and we have no time to read and meditate on the word of God, allowing the word of God to transform us on the inside, we are indirectly rejecting the sanctifying power of God. We are telling God that we don't want to be holy before him. We don't want to be transformed into his image. We want to remain in our sinful state, loathing in our selfish desires, unclean desires. Colossians chapter 3 says, put to death the desires. If you really are Christians, if you really are the children of God, you will readily and willingly put to death those evil desires. The Bible tells us that in this present generation, there is a group of people that think they are righteous before God. They have their own definition of what darkness and light is. The Bible tells us that in their eyes, they are clean. Without giving up their sinful nature, without confessing and without allowing the word to teach them and tell them what darkness and light is, what life and death is, what sin and holiness is, it is impossible for man to be righteous before God. Therefore, let us take time to attend churches, to attend Bible studies. Let us take time to read and meditate on God's word at home. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. The Bible is very clear when it says, when Jesus Christ says, my sheep, I speak to my sheep. I know my own sheep and my sheep can and will hear my voice. Are you the sheep of God tonight? Have you practiced and acquainted yourself to hear the marvelous voice of God? Sometimes people get lost with television and gossip and fellowship with friends and family. Sometimes they get lost in all these preachers preaching on TV or TBN or on God TV. And they forget to understand that God not only speaks through his servants, yes, he does, but he longs to speak to you personally. The book of Revelation says, Behold, I knock at the door of your heart. You see, God is outside. He's outside the door of your church. He's outside the door of your ministry. He's outside. He's standing outside of the door of your heart, just like he stood outside, outside of the door of this particular church. Because the people didn't want his word. The people like today and during the times of Noah didn't want his word, didn't want that sanctifying word. They wanted to assume what right and wrong is. They wanted to call darkness light. They wanted to call sin as holiness. The Bible warns us to not do that. It tells us, woe to him that calls 
darkness has light and light has darkness. The Bible also warns us through Apostle Paul where he writes, make sure that the light you claim to have in you is not darkness. The Bible is like a mirror to us. The Bible is powerful and active. It is able to penetrate into your heart and to your innermost thoughts. And it is able to judge your intentions and your motives. God is able to expose your sin. He is able to speak to you. He is able to uncover all your secrets, all your questions and all your thoughts. And he is able to judge you right there through his word. Why does he judge us through his word? He judges us through his word because he wants us to confess those sins. He wants us to confess those weaknesses. He wants us to repent of our ways, our sinful and selfish ways. He wants us not only to repent and confess our sins and our weaknesses, but he wants us to learn about his ways. And this is where man often fails because he's so stuck in his ways. I have seen believers, believers who are filled in the Holy Spirit, that they are so used to doing things in their own self, in their own sinful way, that they still haven't gotten rid of jealousy and anger and unclean emotions and immaturity. But God's word is willing to transform us in these wicked days. If we will just draw close to the presence of God, if we will just hide under the shadow of God, and meditate on his word and on his plans and will that is found in it. We will not be afraid. For God has chosen us to be his children. He has predestined us not for destruction, not for wickedness, not for confusion, not for the floods that's going to come upon the wicked. Floods is symbolic of trouble. It's symbolic of hard times, difficult times, wicked times. God has not ordained that for us. He has ordained us for a beautiful eternal life in heaven. Free of sorrow, free of pain, free of death, free of sicknesses, free of turmoil. He has preordained this for us because he loves us. If you want to remain in the love of God, if you want to remain in the book of life, if you want to remain as a children of light in this dark, wicked world, Jesus Christ invites you to submit yourself at the altar of his cross. He invites you to confess all your weaknesses, all your sins, all your rebellion. And as we do that tonight, the power of sanctification will begin its work and it will transform us into the children of the Almighty God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for you have loved us and you have chosen us out of the world, Lord. You have pulled us out from the kingdom of darkness, from the kingdom of sin, <clears throat> from the kingdom of wickedness, and you have made us to be seated in heavenly places in your kingdom of light and holiness 
and eternity. Help us, Lord, to set our eyes on heavenly things. Help us to set our eyes on your word. And as your scripture says in Colossians chapter 3, help us to keep our minds and eyes set on your word and on eternal things that are in heaven. Give us the power to stay strong in our faith, to hold on to your word, and to remain in the sanctifying power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you all.